Welcome to the paddle painting workshop at the Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival. If you're following along at home today, we're going to be creating this wooden paddle with a floral design. Um, if you didn't purchase one of our workshop kits, you can still follow along at home using whatever materials you might have. Some paper, some pens, markers, uh, anything like that. You can also print out one of these sheets and follow along that way. If you did purchase one of your our kits, um, you'll be receiving this wooden paddle here, a set of paints like this one, some paint brushes, and a permanent marker. Other things you might want to have on hand is a glass of water to wet your paint brushes, and something to cover your surface so that you don't get it too messy. If you're following along with me, we'll be creating this floral design, but you're welcome to branch out and do any kind of design you like. Our first step is going to be painting on the background color um, of our paddles. And you're gonna wanna use a color that's sort of light because our paints aren't totally opaque and it's gonna be a little difficult to paint a lot of layers to, get it sh to make it show up correctly. So this one I did on a light blue background. I did one on a yellow background and that shows up very well. I experimented and did on a dark blue background. It's a little harder to see your design, but if that's the look you're going for, you could do that. Our first step will be painting a background on our paddles. Because these paints aren't totally opaque, I recommend using a lighter color, like this yellow or maybe this blue. I think I'm gonna choose this blue. Um, and you're just gonna wanna squeeze out your color onto some type of plate or spare piece of cardboard or palette you might have. And you're gonna find the largest brush in your kit because we're gonna be painting quite a large space on our paddle. So I'm just gonna get some color onto my brush here and just start doing the bottom and just start doing the bottom of the paddle. We're going to go right up to the edges on this. You can paint the whole thing if you'd like, but I'm going to just paint this bottom part. And to finish up the top, I'm going to add some water to my brush to sort of thin out the paint a little. And I'm going to kind of feather my paint upwards. If you wanted your color to be a little darker or more opaque, you could apply a second coat. I'm gonna leave it this way. And we're going to let this background dry down a little bit. While we wait for our background to dry, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what kind of colors you can create with this paint set. As you see, we have quite a lot of colors, but if you wanted to create some different shades for yourself, I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm going to take the some of the red and the yellow and our blue again. And these are our primary colors. 
now. If you wanted to create some different shades of your own, if you mixed the red with our yellow, we'd be creating an orange. Now if I took some of our red over here and brought in our blue, you can see that we are creating sort of a purpley color. And lastly, if we drag our yellow into our blue, we've got a green. And as you add a little bit more of each color, you can create some different shades. We've also got some white and black in our kit. If I were to add some white to our red here, you can see we create a pink, we create a lighter purple or a lighter blue. There's so many different things we can do when we mix our colors. And if you wanted a darker color, you would just do the opposite and you would add in some of our black paint. It doesn't take a lot of black to darken a color. So I would start off with maybe just a dash. You can see that's already too much. We've created some kind of brown over here. <laughs> darker blues or some darker greens and that's what you can do with the black. Once your background has dried down it's going to look matte it's not going to look shiny anymore and that's our indication that we can start painting our design onto it. My design today is inspired by plants and flowers. There's lots of traditional medicinal plants on Algonquin territory and so I'm taking my inspiration from that today. So for this bit, you can choose to use your Sharpie, your permanent marker. I'm just going to use um, the smallest brush I have and a little bit of black to create my stems. your brush a little bit wet it might help the paint go on a little smoother and we're going to create three stems down the center of our paddle so the first one I'm starting fairly far up and you can take your time on this as I said, you can also use the permanent marker from your kit. I just wanted my line to be slightly thicker than that permanent marker, so I'm going in with our paint. And I'm not making a totally straight line, I'm making it kind of wavy. There's our first one done, sort of down the center. And we will do one more on each side. These ones can be a little wavy too. Not too wavy, or it might get a little crazy looking.
And there we have our stems. The three flowers I've chosen today are, are sort of inspired by real plants you can find in and around the Algonquin area, Algonquin territory. I'll show you the first flower I'm doing. It's uh, called the wild sunflower. Sometimes it's also known as the Jerusalem artichoke. And you can find it all over the place in the sides of the road and the forest. And it's this yellow flower Kind of reminds me of a daisy. So we're going to paint lots of nice little petals here. I'm choosing yellow, but you can choose any color you'd like. Maybe you can choose some plants from your garden to be inspired by, or your province, or anything like that or you can go totally crazy and just make up whatever kind of flower you want. I'm using a small brush here because these are kind of small petals. They don't have to be totally finished looking. In the end we're going to go in with our permanent marker and sort of Outline them if you'd like, touch up the edges. And if you're painting on a yellow background, maybe you've made this flower pink or blue or orange. So this plant that I'm basing this off of, the roots of this plant sort of look like ginger but they can be cooked like potatoes, which is kind of interesting. So I've finished off my petals here. I think I want to add a dash of white to the center of these flowers. Just so I get the yellow off my brush. Grab some of that white and there we go and again we're gonna sort of touch everything up put in the details at the very end i'm gonna add some more flowers off of this stem a little further down some tinier tinier ones I'm just sort of dragging my brush outwards or inwards, creating all the, the petals in sort of one stroke at a time. And if it looks a little empty later, we might add some more flowers, but I think for now we are going to leave that one and move on to our next plant. So the next one I'm choosing is blueberries. As you might know, we've got lots of wild blueberries in Ontario. You can choose to make blueberries or maybe a different kind of berry, strawberries, blackberries, little red berries. I've also seen little white berries around. I'm going to use this ultramarine blue, just a dash of red because blueberries are sometimes more purple than they are blue. Be 
I'll lighten it up a tiny bit with my white. There we go. Make it sure it's different enough than our background. I'm still using a small brush because these flowers are pretty detailed. So I'm gonna make a little cluster of, of blueberries here. I'm sort of taking the brush straight on and then bending out in a circle on one side, take a bit more paint, bend it out in a circle in the other direction, and sort of meet it up. If your paint's not sort of dragging the way you want, maybe add a little bit more water to your brush. Sometimes it helps the paint be a little more fluid. And I'm gonna put another little berry beside it. And again, if they're not perfect, Nothing's perfect in nature, or everything's perfect in nature. But it's totally fine if they're not perfect circles. Again, we're going to touch them up at the end with our marker. So I like my little cluster of three up there. I think I will make another cluster a little further down the stem, maybe on this side. These can be a little tricky. If yours don't look like mine, that's totally fine. You can just keep painting flowers if you'd like. Your paddle can be abstract if you like. There's no rules here. See this one, it's a little harder to tell that I've got three circles in there, but I'm not too worried because I'm gonna touch it up later. I think I need, you know, maybe one more blueberry down here. Just a lonely blueberry. There you go. We're going to move on to our next flower. The next flower that I'm sort of taking inspiration from is something called Indian hemp. And back in the day, this was used as a medicinal plant, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't eat it unless it's pr properly prepared because some of the plants in this plant family can be toxic. But it also has many other uses such as um, using the stems of the plant as, as rope, as sort of cording. You know, they made, we made nets from it. Um, little games, fishing nets, all sorts of things. So traditionally these flowers are white, but I'd like to add a little more color to our paddle, so I'm going to make them this kind of pink. And these ones are sort of little bell-shaped. Um, the way I do them is I kind of create these little, an M, or little ears, and then I so just scoop it around and that's our shape right there. I'm going to create a little cluster of these. In nature these would be white but you can make them whatever color you want on your paddle. It's all up to interpretation. I'm going to do another one down here. Do my little M or little ears, however you want to look at it. And then scoop around. 
and fill it in the middle. Little M. Oh, having trouble with this one. There's our M shape. And scoop it around and fill it in. I think these are looking good. I'm noticing now that my yellow flowers have dried down. It's looking a little sheer. So I might go in and do a little second layer of my yellow on the tips where I want it to look maybe a little more sharp. And if yours are looking like that too, you can do the same. too far on that one, that's okay. Now we're going to Take one of our greens, or you can, you can use one of the greens that came in your kit, or you can create a green, like we mentioned before, with yellow and blue. I'm just going to use the green that came with the kit because it looks pretty great to me. This one's called Sap Green. And I'm going to go in with our detail brush again, one of our thin brushes. And I'm just going to paint some leaves. Anywhere it looks like there might be some gaps. So here or here, we just create some leaves. So I'm going to put my brush down and scoop around a bit like how we did some of the flowers. Brush down, scoop around and meet at the stem and color it in. Put my brush down. Scoop up and around. Do the opposite on the opposite side. And then color it in. Now my green's looking like it might disappear into the background a bit, but that's okay because we're going to add a border to these leaves once these are dry. And then if your paint is sort of sticking like mine is, you can loosen it up with a bit of water again. might help it go on a little easier. On our sort of bell-shaped plant, I'm going to do a different kind of leaf. I'm going to start right at the base and go upwards and create these kind of thin leaves just for a little bit of difference in our flowers. You can do all the same kind of leaf or you can do different leaves. I think that looks good. And on this one, I'm going to do these little leaves that kind of remind me of bow ties. <laughs> I'm just matching them 
from one side to the other side. Now that I've got my leaves down, like before, I'm noticing that my pink needs a little bit of help. So I'm gonna do a second coat of my pink ones here. Help it stand out a little better. create a little more, more pink. If you remember, we used some white and we used some red. There we go. Get my brush wet a little bit. And to touch up those flowers. You might not need to do this if you're paint's a little more opaque than mine, or if you used a lighter background. Now you can touch up anything you think you need to touch up before we go on to our next step. I'm just gonna define this leaf a little better. And the last thing we're gonna do before we let this dry again is add these sort of little circles. They could be stars or maybe they look like little little lightning bugs to you <laughs> or some pollen in the air I'm just doing these little circles and I'm making mine yellow you can make yours any color you'd like and we are going to add in the details with our marker a little later so just anywhere there might be a little spot you can do as many as you want, or as little as you want. Oh, I washed that one off with my hand. There you go. We're going to leave this to dry, and we're going to come back and fill in the details in a little bit. Now that our paddle is totally dry, you can see that it's not shiny anywhere. Um, we're gonna go in with our permanent marker and do a little bit of detail. So if you like the way it looks, you can just leave it how it is. But I think it looks kind of cool when it's all crisp and detailed. So I'm just going around each petal And we'll also do the leaves. You could do this with your black paint, but I find that this detail work is so small that Sometimes that's really hard to do. And 
I'm just tracing um, the outlines going around the outside of everything and you can see even if you think you made a little mistake with your paint this makes everything quite crisp and gives everything definition going around my blueberries now and even if things didn't quite look like a perfect circle you can sort of fix it with your pen and our little bow tie leaves looking kind of cute Also going to sort of make sure the stem meets up with our flowers. And on our little circles. I'm going to do a circle on the outside and a little circle on the inside. You could leave it here if you want or I'm going to add a few more little details in with a pen. Down the side of this flower, I'm going to do little circles. This just creates a little bit more visual interest. You could add swirls if you like. Anything that's your style. On this one, I'm going to add just these little V's all down the stem. And to my flower here, I might add a little swirl. In various places just to add some more detail there and there we go you're done your paddle now if you want to add your name here or you can add your name on the back add some more colors up the top you can really really do anything you want if you wanted to do a totally different pattern on this side make it a sort of double paddle um, you can do anything you want. Thank you for joining me today for this paddle painting workshop. I hope you had a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments below what kind of design you chose to make and tag some photos of your paddles on Instagram or on Facebook and tag the Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival. Thanks for joining me.